Hello everyone and welcome, welcome, welcome. We've got another episode of our Lost Ark Newcomer series today. I'll talk to you about some progression, getting started, and what to expect when you start out with your first character in Lost Ark. Before we get into that though, this is a YouTube video, so feel free to go berserk on that like button, unleash your inner bard in the comments, and subscribe for more Arcasia-centered content. So when we are talking about progression, we're focusing on the first 50 levels of the game and the story portions that lead up to hitting that soft cap. Now this can happen at a bunch of different times throughout your playing of the game, but strictly speaking, after you achieve level 50, you're beginning what's called the end game. So the actual definition of your Lost Ark progression is pretty nebulous, but for the purposes of this series, we are just going to call it reaching level 50 and obtaining a gear score of 302. If that doesn't make sense now, don't worry, we'll unwrap all of that as the story unravels, but let's get back on track. So when you start your first playthrough of Lost Ark, you'll have the opportunity to play through the tutorial. This part of the game is pretty short and clocks in in about 15 minutes if you're skipping all the cutscenes as fast as you can, but if you want to take your time and take in everything you're seeing and hearing, you can say about 30-ish minutes or so. The tutorial itself is just a prologue to the story of the game that will teach you some basics and give you a little cosmetic gift after you complete it for the first time. Ask yourself whether it's more important to learn what's going on or if you'd rather just jump right in. If you answered in the latter, then you can hit the skip prologue button in the top left corner of the screen, lose the goggles, and start making your way to the game's first little action sequences. Whether or not you choose to actually do this, your character will be level 10 when you begin the actual game, so don't worry about losing any XP if you decide to skip it. In order to start our progression though, let's get talking about our skills. So mainly we're going to focus on the skill menu itself because the number of skills in the game and the classes that have them is extremely high. So we'll talk mostly about the effects of skills, the different attributes that they can have, and all of that stuff. You might recall when you were in the test zone that you can only use 8 abilities and your identity, which is uh, known in the west as your specialty skill. But when you open up the skill menu, your default hotkey is K you'll see that there is a bunch to work with. Not only that, but you only get uh, six skills to start with when the game is opened up for you the first time, depending on your class. The Deadeye actually gets, what is it, eight, but you have to flip between your weapons to use your shotgun and your rifle skills. Now breaking this down, we're going to start with the ability itself, the icon, all the way over on the left. Mouse over the icon like you would in any other game that you've ever played, and you'll get a description of the ability. This also comes with a whole bunch of other information that's really useful for deciding what abilities are going to work best for you. So let's start off with the Earthquake Chain as an example. This ability is a short-range AoE that has your character stomp the ground and deal a big amount of damage. Starting from the top, though, you can see the ability is considered normal, so there's no special modification to how it works, but this could be normal, this could be holding, combo, charge, etc. Basically, this tells you how you're going to press the button and the ability is going to work. So a normal skill is just press button, let go, a combo skill would be pressing the button multiple times, and so on and so forth. Under that, you can see that it is a stamina skill, which is specific to the scrapper, and that this ability will use the stamina resource, not the shock resource. So if you're not playing a scrapper, you don't have to worry about that, but typically that is where your resource cost will be. So if you're using mana, that's the mana it's going to take from you. The cooldown is next and pretty self-explanatory, but further down you can see the skill level and extra effects. Another Scrapper-specific part of this ability feeds into the Scrapper specialty. We generate 20 shock for spending 30 stamina. So that doesn't mean much to non-Scrapper players, but other characters will show the resource or their abilities right there. Now the next two lines are super important because they're going to tell you stagger level and attack direction. Stagger damage is really simple to understand, but it comes in 6 degrees of efficacy. We go from low to mid to high with versions in between those, and the absolute tip-top being high plus. 
Now the reason that stagger is important is because most bosses in the game will have stagger meter just below their health, and once that bar is depleted, the boss will become exhausted. That's going to drop it on the ground, leaving your party completely open to attacking it without having to worry about any retaliation. It's free real estate. I mean damage. Stagger is really simple but insanely important, as you'll find out. And then the last part of this is going to be the attack direction. Now this is only going to be front or back, but there are big differences in how those two things work. The frontal attacks are going to be dealing 20% more damage with 10% more stagger. Back attacks are only going to be dealing 5% increased damage, but also have a 10% more chance to crit. So what this means is that characters with a lot of frontal attacks, like the Gunlancer, are going to deal much more stagger damage with characters like the Scrapper, who will be attacking mostly from behind, to get as much crit damage as possible. Specifically, if you're playing the Gun Lancer, which is the only real tank class currently, your whole job is to keep the boss's attention and knock them out as fast as possible so your DPS class can hit them from the back as safe as possible. Without a tank, you're really at the mercy of how the boss positions and who it aggroes, so definitely be careful if you don't see a big guy with a shield and a stick in your party. There are a couple other things that you can see in the abilities, but we'll look at Chain Destruction Fist for those instead of Earthquake Chain. Now this ability has a weak point, or as it is called in uh, the East, it is Part Break, I believe, in Korea and, uh, and Russia. And it also has Super Armor. So weak point is specifically for bosses that have breakable body parts, and with certain monsters you can break tails or limbs to make fights easier in some way. There are five levels of weak point, but really just remember to check and see if the boss that you're having trouble with has breakable limbs. Very Monster Hunter-esque if you've ever had the pleasure of chasing down Rathalos to cut off its tail. Next we've got the Super Armor. Super Armor has three different degrees, and the first of which is the Paralysis. That is the lowest on the tier, but still effectively interrupts movement and actions without any lingering effects. So when I say Super Armor Paralysis Immunity, uh, that is going to prevent you from being paralyzed by hits that interrupt movement, interrupt channels, that sort of stuff. Those interrupting abilities don't have any lingering effects like stuns or knockbacks, which are the next two levels of your super armor. So the next level up is push immunity and is the easiest to understand. So push immunity is an immunity to all knocking effects. So that's ups, downs, backs, all are neutralized when using an ability with this super armor. So what that means is that a lot of your bosses are going to be push immune. Some of your bigger enemies are going to be push immune because they cannot be knocked around, but that does not mean that they cannot be CC'd. And then the last thing up is the all immunity super armor. So this type is going to make you immune to status effects like stunning, which would hold you in place for a very long time. But basically, if you have a an ability that says super armor all immunity, you can effectively dodge through every thing in the game. All the knockups, all the CCs, the stuns, the freezes, anything like that, you can just go right through it. Now, the values of all of these skills can change when you're in PvP, and all you have to do to check that out is hold down the Alt key while you're hovering over the, uh, the ability itself, and it'll swap between the PvE and the PvP values. I'm not super into the PvP aspect, but just know that it is out there, and if that's a thing that you're interested in, it's easy to check and see what your skills can do. If you are going into PvP, I would highly recommend remembering what your best super armor skills are and starting to learn the, uh, the super armor skills of other classes, because that is going to make a huge deal in the uh, skill expression, we'll call it, in the, the PvP for this game. So the very last thing that we need to talk about in terms of abilities is the counter tag. So you're not going to see this one on a lot of skills, but every class has at least one counter ability. So you really just have to find it in the ocean of abilities that you do have. Counters are the coolest abilities in my opinion because the satisfaction of making them connect correctly is enough to make anyone scream with pre-teen boy band glee. Counter abilities are used on bosses to stop specific abilities that they do, 
and knock the boss directly on its ass. So the boss is going to glow blue when they are using counterable abilities, and you have to be in front of them to make the counter connect. So remember that. If you're not facing their face, you're not going to get the counter. There are instances where that's a little bit different. You can be maybe at, at a weird angle to make it connect, but more often than not, if you're not directly in front of them, you're going to whiff the counter and look like a big dummy. The only reason that's different for the Gun Lancer is because most of the positioning that the Gun Lancer does is directly in front of the boss, so you don't have to worry about being on its sides too much. Barring that, though, you'll need some kind of quick movement to get in front of them and rip the ability. So all the counters that I've used so far are pretty quick, but there are a few with a wind-up to them that can be caught in the cast animation. So if you're a little bit too slow on getting in front of the boss, or you didn't realize that the, uh, the counter was happening quick enough, then you might be out of luck. Now I know it took about 100 years to talk about all the skill descriptions, but this next part should be much quicker. Leveling skills is going to, number one, increase their damage, and number two, unlock three effects that you can choose from at three different tiers. Before we do that though, remember that when you are putting points into abilities, that the level up cost will take more and more skill points the higher that the ability goes. You can see how many you need in the column that says uh, REQ points. It's just shorthand for required points, but that's right next to the up and down buttons for putting skill points in. So you can see if a skill needs another 8 or another 10 to put in, it'll tell you and you can determine whether or not you have that many. If you need more than that, though, just remember that to get to 4, you only need 4 points. To get to 7, you need 16 points. And then to get to 10, you'll need 28 points. Which leads me to the next point about our tripod effects. So if you've ever played HOTS, you'll probably recognize this more like talents, but you're not permanently locked into them when you choose them. Tripods will give you uh, increasingly better changes to your ability, and you can choose any of the three of them at any point. Level 4 tripods usually have the most simple effect, so we'll take a look at Death Rattle as an example for all three tiers of these tripods. The first set of abilities will either reduce the cooldown, increase the radius, or increase the speed in which the attack happens. In cases like these though, if you see attack speed, just remember it literally means how fast the ability animation happens. So it's not you're going to use the ability and then attack faster, it just means that the ability is going to happen 15% faster. The 7 tier of tripods for Death Rattle gets a little bit cooler though. So you can instead opt for push immunity while you're casting the skill, increase the damage it does to a single target by 30% all of the time, or let it do 40% increased damage, but only to targets that have half their health remaining or less. Now keep in mind this isn't standard for all skills. Some level 7 tripods actually let you change the way the ability functions completely. So once you hit the last tier of tripod at level 10, you get two options of the insane variety. Specifically speaking, with Death Rattle, this ability is going to gain damage depending on how much of the scrapper's shock meter is actually built up. So if you have a full shock meter when you press the button, you're going to do 60% extra damage. But if we take the level 10 tripod shock explosion, we're basically going to double that damage and double it at each other tier of shock meter that's built up. Essentially, this tripod is going to be in incredibly, incredibly good for increasing the damage of Death Rattle, which is a very, very big portion of the Scrapper's DPS. The other option that we have at level 10, though, is going to consume half of the resource that it previously did. On paper, that might not sound great, but Death Rattle, when you press the button, it's going to eat your entire shock meter and is going to use whatever value it is at to judge the extra damage that it's doing. But if we're using this tripod instead, we're only going to lose 50% of the shock meter that we have, meaning that if we're a full bar, we're only going to go down to half, and we're not going to lose any damage because of the lesser resource consumed. So, at 100% meter, we still have 50% meter left over while still doing 100% of the damage. That, in and of itself, 
makes the ability or makes the tripod extremely good because you still have plenty of shock left over for some other heavy hitting green skills. So basically the effects that these level 10 tripods provide are absolutely ridiculous and whichever class that you're rocking, you should definitely check out all of your options. And remember that you're not locked in, so as soon as you get enough skill points to get one ability to level 10, you can literally test all of your options that you have to level 10. So if you have eight abilities unlocked, feel free to go through all eight of those abilities, checking and seeing what they do at level 10, taking the points out, and then checking another one, if you're into that. Obviously, you can just find one that you like and rip it till the end of time, but you have the option available. Now, there are a couple other things on the skill menu that we won't talk about, such as uh, tripod levels, runes, and uh, there are actually gear tripods as well that will affect your, your skills, but all of that stuff is way later in the game and it's not going to happen until way past level 50 i can assure you so don't go worrying too much about these until you are in the end game focus on what looks cool and feels fun for now and get yourself progressing that is going to be it for this episode of the newcomers lost ark guide though i hope you guys learned a thing or two but feel free to let me know either way if you need some other information We'll be back next week with another one of these and really just try to open up all of the simplest things that we can so you guys can get through your progression and start looking at the end game stuff. That is it though, everybody. Peace out. I'll see you next time.